Well, welcome back. My goodness, we're already up to part four. I can't believe it. This is like the last uh, series we did on that uh, Atwater Camp 145. They just, you know, right out of that chute, man, they just started clicking by. Well, that's okay. That's okay. I enjoy doing it. I just hope you continue to enjoy watching them and hopefully learning from them. You know, once again, I'll say that the old timers know how to do this. They don't need any wisdom or input from John. You know, this is primarily for the folks who, you know, either want a refresher course in a certain, you know, in a few things, or they just want to follow along and learn some stuff for maybe a radio that they have. Anyway, all I'm doing here today is I'm taking my little acid brush and, you know, the alcohol I have over here and some pipe cleaners, and I'm doing a little cleaning down inside the, uh, you know, the socket holes after I dip the the pipe cleaner and the alcohol. I'm just running it up and down each socket hole. Uh, it's kind of a long process. I got 11 tubes here to do that to. And each one has, what, eight holes? So it's at 88 holes? <laughs> anyway, and then I'll take maybe the, you know, the alcohol and I'll clean the top of the socket, kind of get it cleaned off. But while I was doing that, I thought I'd show you how this dial thing works. What we have here, let me get my pencil. What we have here uh, are two different light diffusers. We have one, this one here in the front, that's stationary. It does not move. The one behind it, which is this larger one that sticks down on both sides, that one moves. And the larger one has slots in it. You know, you can see the slots through the front diffuser. And when the dial light shines through and you change bands, the light comes up, shines through this piece of glass right here and you know illuminates the row on the dial okay or the dial scale whatever you want to call it you know whatever band you're on it'll illuminate that range this thing has five different bands it has long wave broadcast and a whole bunch of other stuff I'll go over that later see there from the top of the dial all the way down to the bottom as you as you change bands pretty cool huh and this uh, shining the light through this piece of a uh, round glass yeah, you know, brings it down to uh, just a, a spot, you know, a, a, a little beam looking thing. So that's pretty neat, I think. I like it. So uh, let me get clean in a little bit and we'll come back. We'll talk about uh, what else I've been doing as far as locating parts, things like that. It's just, today's just kind of a piddle day, you know. I'm trying to get familiar with the... Uh, schematic a little more and where the parts are on the chassis. You have to do that once in a while. You have to stop, take a deep breath and start locating parts. Uh, otherwise later on you're going to have trouble because you won't know where the parts are. And you'll be hunting and hunting and stuff like that. We, we don't need that. We find them now, okay? Well, it just occurred to me that some of you may have never used a uh, pipe cleaner. You buy these pipe cleaners in a smoke shop or something. I got lucky. I think I found a Two, three packs of them one day in Kroger when I went there. They were at the checkout stand or Fred's. Might have been Fred's. Fred's store. Anyway, all you do is you, you just soak your little pipe cleaner. Stick it down in the holes. I mean, that's, that's all there is to it. Get them nice and clean. You've got to have those things clean. This uh, radio is not all that dirty. I've seen a whole lot worse. You know, get them nice and clean. When the end gets dirty, you can snip it off and, and move it, you know. Shorten it up a little bit. That's not too bad, see? I've seen a whole lot worse than that. And that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to spend the next few minutes doing that. Nothing to it, guys. Nothing to it. I've been working uh, with this radio chassis off this Riders uh, schematic, which is, you know, blurry, hard to read, very small. So I put in an order for another schematic and a bunch of service information on this radio from Chuck Schwark. Chuck Schwark is my man when it comes to this stuff. I, especially the Philco's. I think I think that's all he does is the Philco's. If I'm not mistaken, but he'll he you know I I've already put in my order. I've already sent him my money. It should have it in a few days. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and look and see what we've got here as far as electrolytic capacitors go. We'll just look at it on the computer, and even then it's a little bit blurry. I I blew it up real big and. Still not that good. Okay, right here, coming off of the uh, rectifier tube, we've got a, we have an eight microfarad electrolytic right there, right there. We have an eight 
microfarad electrolytic right there, and we have a 10 microfarad electrolytic right there. An 8, an 8, and a 10. Now let's go over here a little further and you'll see that we've got a 3 microfarad, and it looks like a 1 microfarad there. It's hard to tell. It could be 2, but 1 or 2. So we've got 5 electrolytics here. A 1, a 3, a couple of 8s, and a 10. That's it. Now the, uh, the, the 1 and the 3, or the 2 and the 3, I, I won't know till actually Chuck Schwartz's uh, drawings come in, which are much clearer. I don't, there's not really a whole lot of difference between a 1 and a 2, though. They're both in this can here. This is 37A and 37B, next to the uh, tuner, okay? The over here is part 88, and it's an 8 microfarad, one can. This can over here is part 86. This is the best I can make out, you know, at, you know we're trying to read those blurry numbers. This is part 86 and 86A, which is the 8 and the 10. 8 and 10 in this can, 8 only in this can, and either a 2 and 3 or 1 and 3 in this can right here. Well, now that we've figured all that out, the question is, what is this 20 microfarad 450 volt ECAP doing in here? And what is this? What is this? This is a 16 microfarad 450 volt down here. What are they doing under there? Well, I don't know. Guess what? They're coming out. You're breaking that off, it's pretty much game over. At least for that speed it is, you might have the rest of them, but I gotta figure out if that screws off of there or how does that come off of there. I'm sitting here watching uh, the trials and tribulation of our buddy Nathan, NBH45304, with his little Philco stereo, or I mean the turntable he's having problems with, the record player. <laughs> oh man, you know, yeah, anytime I get a little frustrated, I can always go look around a YouTube video and find someone else having just as many problems sometimes as I do. And it's kind of, it, it's kind of refreshing to see folks actually just Take, you know, just take the bull by the horns and fix it. Or at least give it, a, you know, give it the old college try. Do the best they can. And that's what it's all about. Do the best you can. Never get frustrated, never get frustrated, never get frustrated. This is fun stuff. Maybe I can work that up out of there. That's right, Nathan. Maybe you can. <laughs> The capacitors are out, and they're going in the trash. Now look, folks, you younger guys in particular, anytime you buy a radio and you flip it over for the first time and you see these big old yellow paper-type electrolytics in there, zero in on them. Chances are they've been added, and chances are they're the wrong size, and chances are they're connected to the wrong place. Well, after eyeballing this uh, chassis, and schematic a little bit longer, which you know is, be, is the familiarization part of working on a radio. That's why you don't rush it. You know, you study it, figure it out, and then you, then you you know come up with an approach on how you're going to restore it or repair it or, or you know whatever the case may be. I found another capacitor right there, right there. It's a two microfarad, and it has a, it says green right there. Hmm. Now we come down here a little bit further. You've got this. This turns out to be a one microfarad. I couldn't quite read it. I thought it might have been a two. So that is in fact a 1.0. It looks like 1.0. And that's a plain. It says plain. Hmm. Now we come over here. We've got a 3.0. And it says yellow. And that's interesting. You know, it's difficult to make out those. I'm almost certain it's one, two, and three. It's kind of difficult to make it out, like I said. It's just kind of hard to read. But one, two, and three. I'm sure that's what it is, microfarad. And they're labeled as green, plain, and yellow. And what does that mean? What that means is inside this can are actually, this, this can consists of three capacitors. I've got two, and, two microfarad and three microfarad written right there. 
So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get this light out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and write one microfarad up here also. One microfarad. This pencil, they can come off later, okay? Just kind of reminds me. So I've got one, two, and three. But what's that green, yellow, and plain stuff all about? Those colors are all about <clears throat> the way the, the uh, terminals were colored on the bottom of the can. Way down inside there, you'll see a yellow one. There's a plain one to the right, which has no paint on it whatsoever. That's, that's just a, a silver one, so that's plain. And just below the yellow one, you can't see it very well in the camera, just below the yellow one is a green one. So it's yellow, green, and plain on the bottom of that can. So that's what those colors were for. And now, of course, the question comes up, well, how the heck am I supposed to get those wires off that can way up in there to replace those uh, electrolytics with nice new modern types? Well, it's not going to be easy, but I do have a plan. <laughs> with those large caps gone, we have quite a bit of room in here now, quite a bit. Up here also, look at that, I can stick my whole hand in there. Those large caps take up a lot of space. Tell you what, what do you say we, let's go ahead and check the continuity in the two intermediate frequency transformers, or the two IF cans. Now these are the two cans I'm talking about. This is uh, IF number one and IF number two, or IF transformer number one and IF transformer number two. And uh, each one has a primary and a secondary in it. They're just little transformers. And uh, they need to be checked out. they got to be checked out. One of them has a grid cap connector coming out of it. We'll be uh, connecting to that with one of our, one of our test leads. So kind of remember that when I tell you we're hooking to the, to the uh, grid cap. That's what we're talking about, that right there. The two IF cans, uh, number one and number two, are of course ohmed out from the bottom with the exception of that grid cap wire I just showed you. We're just going to be putting our meter here, there, and everywhere and see if we can get some kind of continuity through the primaries and secondary of each can. You already know the schematic for this thing is really a busy type of, busy kind of thing. I mean, this is wires and coils and everything. A guy can get lost real quick. So what I did was, now right here is the second I have transformer right here. There's the primary on this side. There's the secondary on this side. Here's the first IF transformer with the primary on the left and the secondary on the right. Real small, very difficult to see, at least for me. So I went ahead and, and kind of made it a little bigger. Let's work off something we can see. Tell you what, let's start with something easy. This tiny little, this is the first IF transformer, and we have a coil here, and we have a coil here. Now the end of this coil is hooked to ground. Comes up through, there's no connection here that I can, I can't make that out, but it looks like no connection, it's just a crossover point. It comes up, it may be connected, it's just difficult to tell, but it comes up, and it comes up to pin number 5 on the 6K7. So if I stick one lead at pin number five and the other lead to ground, I should get a continuity beep and a reading of some kind down through this coil. Let's see if that works. <clears throat> Let's see. We've got, counting from the bottom, we go clockwise, not like the top where we go counterclockwise. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. That's pin number five right there. One, see the key, the key in the, uh, in the socket. Count clockwise on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five. Let's hook this to pin number five, just like that. Okay. Now let's take our other lead. I should hook to ground. I should get a beep. Let's find out. I'll just touch it to the chassis anywhere. Here we go. There we go. Look at that. We have continuity. Oh, that, that starts out real good. You know, it's always good to start out with something that kind of builds your confidence, you know. All right, that takes care of that coil. Let's go up to this one here. Again, this stuff is real easy. And there's the grid cap I was telling you about. That wire up here that has the, uh, the grid cap on it I told you about right there. 
Well, we're going to have to connect to the grid cap, so let's just go ahead and get it over with now. We'll move the black wire up to the grid cap, like so. Now let's see if I can find where the other end of it goes. It comes out, it goes through the secondary. We're doing the secondary, that's the easy one. The, you know, the primary we'll get to next. You come out, you go through there, it goes all the way down, and it goes off my page. <laughs> let's go ahead and pull out the little one. Now let me show you where that was. We came down across here like that. We came all the way down, all the way down. We came down to a junction of a 0 0.05 microfarad capacitor and a 1 mega ohm resistor right here. Here, all the way up through the coil and into the tube. All right, now we've already got it hooked to the uh, grid cap. Now if you follow, if you look around, you follow your wires coming out of this can, you'll find that one goes all the way around. It goes from the grid cap, down into the can, through the coil, out the can, and over to a junction between a .05 capacitor right here. Move the lamp, it might be a little bright there. That's a .05 microfarad capacitor, and on the other side of it, you can't see behind it, is a one mega ohm resistor. Okay, it's a matter of just following the wire. It's this wire right here. No, it's not that wire right there. It's this one right here, I believe it is. Okay, follow it down. Comes out right there. So let's go ahead and touch and see if we get a reading. Look at there. Good to go on the secondary. Fantastic. Okay, I am a happy camper so far. To check out the primary, we'll need to hook one of our leads to uh, pin 3, which is the plate of the 6A8. We come out, we come across, comes down, goes all the way through the coil, on down, 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 into Oblivion. <laughs> well, let me get out the other schematic, find out where Oblivion goes. <laughs> Alright, Oblivion, let me see now, we come across and down through the coil to this point right there. Now that point right there is connected to one side of the shadow meter. One of the shadow meter wires, okay? If, if we get continuity between one of the shadow meter wires and the plate of the 6A8, we'll know that this primary is good. The 6A8 I have to get to from the top of the chassis because it's up in behind all those coils and I can't reach it with the probe and you know connect onto it properly. Now we said that the plate was pin 3 of the 6A8 so we have to go counterclockwise when we're at the top. So it's 1, the key of course starting from the key, 1, 2, 3. So we'll stick that in there like that. Now here is the socket for the shadow meter and one of those two red wires that go to the coil and the shadow meter should give us a reading if that IF transformer primary is good. Well, let's see what we can do here if I can find a place to get it to where we can sample it. Let me see, I'm having a little trouble here. There we go. Okay, let's see if we get some kind of a sound out of this deal. Let's go with this one. Let me see, we got red, should be here. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. There it is right there. Of course, it always has to be the last one to check. The coil's good. The primary is good of that IF transformer. Both primary and secondary show good continuity. This video is running way long, so let's go ahead and wrap this uh, second IF coil up real quick like it's a piece of cake. All we have to do is connect it to the plate or pin 3 of the 6K7 and then out through the coil, down, 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 again into Oblivion. Well, in this case, Oblivion turns out to be the other side of the shadow meter. If I can get that thing to ever focus. Anyway, the other side of the shadow meter. So, we've already checked one side of the shadow meter. Here it is, right here. It comes in right here. 
it comes all the way down to here and connects to there. Now I've already, I've got the I've got the alligator clip connected to the other wire that we did not test that did not show continuity to the shallow meter in the last coil. Now what we have to do is check pin five. I mean I'm sorry, pin three on the six K seven. Now this is your six K seven. And what we've got is your key right there. Remember from the bottom is clockwise, so just the opposite from the top is one, two, three. There it is. Good coil. This coil is good. Now we move over to this one, which I don't know if that's a connection or not. Man, this is going to be a tough one. I don't know. If it's not connected, then what we have here is a center tap secondary. I've never seen a center tap secondary in an IF coil before. You know, but there's a lot of things I haven't seen. <laughs> so what we're going to do, uh, if that thing is not connected, we're going to connect on the pin 5 of the 6J5 uh, detector, second detector, and then it's going to read down through here if this is not connected. It's going to read down through the bottom half of the secondary out to a 99,000K resistor. Now, if that is connected, eh, it'll probably still read down through the secondary because, you know, uh, voltage takes the path of least resistance so it's probably going to come down here through here to there I don't know any other I don't know of any other way short of opening up the IF can to check the top coil so if it reads good we're going to assume the top is good until further notice so let's hook uh, something to pin 5 on the 6J5 and then find this white resistor it'll be white white orange okay There's the 6J5, and that's pin 5 right there. Right there. And it has a wire that comes out and goes to the bottom of the IF can. Well, I'm not going to struggle with that. I'll just go ahead and cook, hook the alligator clip right on that little tab right there coming out of the bottom of the can. Why, you know, why, why wrestle around? The white, white, orange resistor is right here. How convenient. And the wire that comes out of the can is, is right there. So all we have to do, I should be able to touch that and get continuity if the bottom half of that coil is good. So let's check it out. Here we go. I'm getting ready to touch. It's good. Okay. So we just checked from pin 5 down around through the bottom half of the coil down to the 99, one side of that 99K resistor. Well, that's it. We're going to call those IF cans both good. And the whole, the whole exercise here, you know, was just like it was last time. Don't let all these wires and all these things intimidate you. It's not that difficult. Just number your pins on your tubes and then start going from one to the other, one to the other. Yet there, there are nothing but lines on a piece of paper that you can find in the chassis if you take your time and follow your wires out. It's not that difficult. It really isn't. Anyway, we'll call this a wrap. But next time, electrolytic capacitors, wax capacitors, and anything else I can think of. Until next time, I appreciate you being here. This is John.